in the heart of Kent. Hi, hi. Thank you. This is Cheeky. Hi. There's a vet's practice like no other. He's very weak. Whatever the creature, there's someone here to treat it. Oh. This cat's in heart failure. Oh, okay. Sorry, sweets. For the very first time, the surgery and its staff have been rigged with cameras. Okay, I don't hear heart. Right, to adrenaline to make her heart go. I wasn't expecting it to be this massive. This is unbelievable. To give us a unique view into this extraordinary world. <laughs> a dedicated team. That looks like it's about to fall off. Saving lives. Yay! Well done. Making difficult decisions. We've got to make sure that we don't get to a stage where he's suffering. And treating animals that others won't. Not every day we see a goat in here. In the clinic today. I know you're super cute. Some puppies are in for a nasty shock. A sugar glider is in danger of going blind. It's worrying if, if it can't be saved. Oh, dear. And a poorly hedgehog has got its owner worried sick. If I had my way, have a tiny bit of medicine, he'll be better, right? <laughs> I mean, he's my life. Expect the unexpected. Good job, everybody. Inside the vets. Animals can be quite difficult to deal with. It's okay. It's okay. You like coming to the vets, um, and it is always a, an unnatural place for them to be, and they can be very scared. Oh, when we have a reluctant customer, one of the things we try to do is make friends with them. They just need you to be their friend for a minute before you then restrain them for the vet to do whatever it is the vet needs to do with them. Most animals will work with us if they, if they understood, I think, but um, they're just too scared. <laughs> and then you get some animals that have no fear and it's the best place to be. Two-year-old fox red Labrador Esther has been a very naughty girl. Right, chill, baby girl. And for her owners, Julie and Kevin, enough is enough. We've uh, bought Esther in today for a spaying um, because she's had too much fun and she's got to go back to work now. What time does she last have something to eat? Eight breakfast. Esther is a key part of Julie and Kevin's security business. Esther's an explosive search dog. She works at the London Stadium. She works for Mace Consultancy, the construction company, Saracens Rugby Club. And she's trained on all aspects of explosive search. Shall we just check her weight because of post-puffiness? Post do you reckon you can sit still just for a sec, Esther? What do you reckon? Point seven, eight, nine. The reason to have a spade was she had two litters of puppies back to back, and we thought two was enough. Okay, who's signing giving us permission to do the procedure? Yeah. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. She's a young dog, so she's got another seven or eight years working lifetime left, and she loves to work. No more maternity leave for you, mate. <laughs> yeah, come on then. See you later. No, can I come with Auntie Faye? Esther! Esther! Good girl! Whoop! Wait for me! Spaying or neutering is described as a routine procedure, which really means that vets perform a lot of them. But it's a serious operation, which requires a general anaesthetic. We do a lot of spaying here, and the operation involves removing the uterus and the ovaries. Yeah, I'm still awake, just now. I'm still awake. Oh, do you feel a bit drunk? You do, don't you? Yeah, that's Heather. Say hello, Heather. The tricky part with spaying is to make sure that no organs or, or tissues that are nearby are damaged when we remove the ovaries and the uterus. 
and that everything that's supposed to be tied off is tied off. With Esther out for the count, she's ready for her first ever Brazilian. Turn you down a bit there, young lady. But as if in protest at her unasked for short back and sides, Esther has a trick up her sleeve. Oh, sorry, girls, that wasn't me. Oh my goodness. Esther, you've got a really smelly ass. Let me just open that door until we actually start. It's very smelly in here. It smells like garbage. Oh, come coming up this end. Despite Esther's antisocial behaviour, the staff are ready to get cracking. OK, blood pressure was 89 that time. Today, vet Laura Beth has student Heather to assist her, which means a valuable extra pair of hands once the uterus and ovaries have been located. Oh, this is so deep. She's quite deep-chested, girl. Right. And you're clamping. So you want to make sure you can feel your ovary. Yeah. Where is it? I'll let you have a squidge in a minute. It's like, go there, go the hard bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes these things are so much easier if yeah. you've just got another pair of hands, just keeping yeah. your attention on there. It's when they're really deep. I think, I think people just assume, you know, we're coming in for a neutering, that's what they do day in, day out. It's yeah. easy. It's not. It's probably one of the most difficult surgeries. I know it's a lot, the do. one that a lot of vets are worried them. about. Yeah. It's major surgery. Can you grab me some more swabs? Yes. By opting to only make a small incision in Esther's abdomen, Laura Beth's room for manoeuvre is tiny. OK, hold that for me. Do you want the light? Everything. Is that Colour's okay? beautiful, yes. She's still quite pink, actually. I'm just going to do a blood pressure. Okay. Heart rate's come up a little bit, but that could just be because you're doing all the fiddling. The rest of the rubbish. Well, let's see. Press. Yeah, press. With the ovaries and uterus out, Esther is in the home straight. And as an early reminder that she'll soon be her old self again, Esther's bowels are back in business. <clears throat> I think she's done it again. <laughs> yeah, it's now bad, Esther. Oh, Esther, that's awful. Whoa. After just under two hours, Esther's operation is nearly over. She should begin to wake up within 15 minutes. One of the pets visiting the practice is exactly delighted to be there. For some, being prickly is a way of life. Hello. Lovely. Take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. As his name suggests, African pygmy hedgehog Grump Grump is rarely the life and soul. He's called Grump Grump because he's the most unfriendliest, unsociable little hedgehog in the world. He hates absolutely everybody but me. No chance in someone having a cuddle with him. He just hates life. But he does love a good mummy cuddle. <laughs> How old is your little one? He's an old man now. He's come up to five. Gosh. Bless him, he's have, you him down. have you had him all...? all... Since he was a baby, yeah. yeah. He just hates men. I, I think he's a ladies' man, yeah. Which I'm quite happy about that I've got Joe. Yes. <laughs> Not Clive. No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, you're to come through. 
the life expectancy of hedgehogs is around five years. How are you doing? I'm good. How have you been? Yeah, I'm all right. Which means Grump Grump is no spring chicken. And how is Grump being? He's slowed right down. So he's still pooing, weeing, okay. on his wheel, eating and all the normal. But he's just slowed down, just not as much. I don't know if that's because he's an old boy now or because of the tumour on the scales. Yes, that'd be great. Grump Grump is no stranger to the practice. He was last here when he broke a tooth. So we brought him in, um, put him asleep to get his tooth taken out, and then we found a tumour in his belly, um, which isn't good news. So we've been bringing him back, and we're going to have another look. Yeah. See if we can have a look at that tooth. Well, he's certainly back to normal personality-wise. <laughs> I'm just going to put some gloves on because it just makes it slightly easier to handle him. So after I'd removed Grump's tooth, um, he had some swelling there, which should have gone down by now. Um, so we would need to investigate it to find out what's going on there and whether it could be linked to his internal tumour. Okay, come on, you. It's all right, sweetie. I know I'm not your favourite. Sorry, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. When hedgehogs feel threatened, the natural defence mechanism is to curl in a ball and make themselves spiky, and they often will jump up and down and make snuffling noises at us. So this was a natural behaviour for Grump to be doing this. Yeah, so there's a red spot in, oh, yes. in the middle there. Yeah, it does look a little bit more swollen. So when, when we extract a tooth, Normally, once that's healed, you shouldn't be able to see anything externally. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't look quite right. Um, right. But it's difficult to say what exactly is going on. There's different possibilities. Um, it could be that there's infection in there. Or obviously, we know that we're, we're worried most about with a lump in his abdomen. But we do sometimes see, obviously, tumours spreading around the body. The most common places for secondary tumours would be in the lungs or in the liver or, or yeah. lymph nodes. Um, whereas that, that's, that's not, obviously, it's at the front of his jaw there. But basically, for any diagnostics with him, he would need to be asleep. There isn't much we can do with him awake. Um, and he did cope very well with the anesthetic before. You know what I was going to say, he's getting old. I know. <laughs> I realise that, that you worry about anesthetics yeah, with them. I do. I do, I do he's realise an old boy that. Now. He's nearly five. It's just but a bit. Again, you get to check his tumour in his belly as well, so. What do you think? Um, I mean, if I have my way, have a tiny bit of medicine, he'll be better, right? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I haven't got a magic pill, <laughs> but... I just think if he's still in pain, and it actually is a growth that we should be addressing now, at least this way we can find the root cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sooner we know about it, the better. That is true. Um, but it's also important to realise that if we do find a serious issue, like a growth in the bone, there isn't always an easy cure for that. Oh, there isn't always an answer. I just, I just think it's important that we speak about, about okay. it. Um, I mean, I cried on you last time. <laughs> it's always difficult when owners have got older animals and they need to make difficult decisions. Um, all we can do is provide them with our honest opinion and talk them through the options. And ultimately, it's their decision as to what they want to do at that point. Okay, right, then. okay. let me just check the diary. Decision made. Grump Grump will have an anaesthetic in the morning. Hey. Hello. The hole where the tooth has come out, uh, we think it's got an infection. I'm hoping it's an infection because it could actually be another growth. So if it's possible tomorrow to drop him off at about nine-ish, does that work? Yes, yeah, fine. Joe gives Grump Grump an injection to ease his pain. Hopefully that will make you feel a little bit better. So you'll keep me updated, won't you? Of course, and if anything were to go wrong, we always contact you immediately. Nothing's going to happen. I think it's pretty <laughs> unlikely. If anything was happened tomorrow, it'd be devastating. And I mean, he's my life. He's my little boy. 
Just got to put on a brave face and see what they can do tomorrow. Just a couple of hours after her spaying operation, Esther is starting to come round. And Julie has returned with her son to collect their canine employee. Who's through here? Who's through here? It's a little bit quieter than this morning. Yeah, <laughs> it's my blast, though. Sorry. It went, yeah, it went fine. She was, yeah, yeah, she went fine. It's just big, because she's had the puppies as well. It's just, yeah, no, it's been just a bit big. Walks on the lead until her stitches come out, so that's for the next 10 days, OK? Just go gentle with her, and you'll find by tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, yeah. she'll be almost back to her normal self anyway, so... And then it's harder to keep her quiet. Yeah. <laughs> like a child. OK, sweetie pie, ring us if you're worried, OK? Yeah. OK, see you later, quiet girl. Quiet as we're going to see her. <laughs> Um, it's a species of small mammal from um, Papua New Guinea. Oh, my word. <laughs> he's a beautiful boy, but he's already lost one eye and now he's got problems with his other. Rihanna works at a nearby agricultural training college, which is home to some tree-jumping marsupials called sugar gliders. No prizes for guessing what they like eating. So this is Sucrose. Sucrose is our, one of our sugar gliders. Sit Crow's lost one of his eyes a while ago and his other eye is now ulcerated and it would be very detrimental for his welfare to leave him with no eyes um, as they are climbers and they jump from tree to tree. Hello, so gross. So is our eye not great? Yeah, again? it just looks very cloudy um, and it seems a little swollen again. Um, oh, so yeah. obviously we thought, bring them. Oh, yes, it does. OK. Hey, so gross. Hey, you're really quite friendly, really, aren't you? Yeah, they're good for handling. OK. I think the plan was to keep Sucrose in for an anaesthetic and to do yeah, a proper deep all... examination of the eye. It definitely does look a little bit cloudy again. And obviously, because it's his only eye left, yeah. we really need... Sucrose. really need you to keep your eye, mate. There are a number of reasons why Sucrose's eye is cloudy. Some treatable, some not. It's always a worry. You work with these animals every day. They're more, you see more of them than you do your family. It's incredible um, how much time you spend with them. And as Sucrose has already lost an eye because of this, it's, it's quite a common problem for him, clearly. So it's worrying if, if it can't be saved. Hello, you little one. You're so cute. Sucrose is on a permanent sugar high, meaning he doesn't stop moving. OK, I'm sorry. An anaesthetic will be necessary. All right, let's give him some oxygen for a while, then. Oxygen is routinely administered before a general anaesthetic. It replaces the nitrogen in the animal's lungs and creates an oxygen reservoir in the body should there be any breathing problems later. OK, if you take this and take that off, I'm going to get him. OK, hold the bit. Oh, OK. Isn't his friend called glucose? Or is it fru fructose? I don't know. I know it's something like oh, one of the one of the other sugars. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, little guy. He says apology not accepted. Oh, so gross. Go to sleep, baby. I've got these lovely wings. Have you seen mm -hmm. them before? Yeah. So they can glide. They're really amazing That's animals. So cool. What we want to do is test his tear production. This is just paper that sucks up the tears. Mm -hmm. And we measure how much it's going to spread in a, in a minute. But he's looking like he's got almost no tear production. Can I have the light, mm -hmm. please? Sucrose the sugar glider has a serious problem in his one remaining eye. If Clive can't save it, 
then sucrose may have to be put to sleep. You can see he's got a lot of edema of his cornea. Is his heart rate the same? Mm-hmm. An edema is any buildup of fluid in the body, but in the eye it will definitely be affecting sucrose's vision. Clive needs a closer look. You couldn't get the um, UV light for me, could you? Right. Wonderful, thank you. Do you need me to flick the light on? Yes, please. Under ultraviolet light, any damage to the front of the eye will shine up green once we've used fluorescein stain, so we can identify where the damage is. Oh, dear. Clive is shining a UV light onto the front of the eye to determine the extent of the damage. So he's got a massive ulcer in his eye. If Clive isn't able to clear the ulcer, the consequences for sucrose could be dire. OK, that's great. Can I have the lights on now, please? Mm -hmm. Let's try and debride this a bit more. So I'm just trying to do a bit of a grid keratotomy on here, since we don't want to have to anesthetize them again. Because when there's an ulcer, there's all this tissue that is dead in the way, and it stops the healthy tissue from coming in. OK, right. Let us wake him up. Come on, you, hey? Have a nice wake up. That's it, you start to wake up. Ah, oh, there you go. Good morning. It's time to let Rihanna, his keeper at the Agricultural College, know what, if anything, can be done. Hi, Rihanna, hi. Right, so a few interesting things we found with poor old um, sucrose. Um, there is another large ulcer at the top part of the eye. Um, and what I did find was a very, very low tear production. And one of the things that happens is if you have low tear production is that you have recurrent eye ulcers. So I am very suspicious that our problem is that there's just not enough tears, so we've got dry eye. The way to treat that is to just give replacement tears ongoing. Um, so first we've got to get rid of this ulcer. But then, assuming that it heals well, um, we'll carry on forever with the eye um, lubricant. Would that be feasible? That's not too... Great. OK. Thanks a lot. Have a good weekend. OK. Bye. Great. Bye. Bye. For now, it's back to college and a rigorous regime of eye drops. For sucrose, the next week will be make or break. Hopefully, the eye can be saved and therefore sucrose can just be put on eye drops as he was before and we can treat it and we can go home normally. So hopefully he's got the best chance at coming through this time. Hey, yeah. In the UK today, up to 8 million reptiles are kept by us as pets. And Tracy, Paul and Drew are amongst that happy breed. This is Hazel. Uh, she's a leopard gecko. She's two and we got her... Got her almost two years ago. Yeah, given to us by my aunt. She's quite like, look at me, ain't she, but don't touch, so... Yeah. Bit of a diva is what she you're saying. She is a bit of a diva, that is the word. She knows diva. what she wants and demands. Yeah. <laughs> knows what she wants and, yeah. And usually gets it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so what's she done? Right. We don't oh, actually know. OK. Hazel the gecko is ordinarily fit as a fiddle, but just days ago she gave her owners a nasty surprise. She's been away in her bed for about two days, and then as soon as she came out on the third day, we saw it straight away. It was that bad. It's on the side of her towel, and it just goes inwards to the towel, and it's quite an open, open wound. So we cleaned it all up, put some iodine spray on it, and then we 
took her here. Paul and Tracy have sprayed so much iodine on Hazel's tail that it's now a vivid purple. When we first noticed it yesterday, Tracy took her out and there were little tiny Baby. black mealworms came out of the hole. Yeah, it looks like there's been some damage under there. We thought we were going to lose her last night and we were just hoping that she was, she was going to be alive in the morning. I just feel so sorry for her. Yeah. Gecko's tails are crucial to their well-being. They use them to store fat when food is scarce in the wild. It looks like she's got it caught somewhere. Right. And ripped a chunk out of it. It's, it's been a bit of a shock how severe it actually is since seeing it. In such a short time, yeah. And in such a short time, yeah. we, we can't really believe how bad it is. So, I think we have a couple of options. I think we could have a regime at home of bathing the tail, or probably, which would probably be soaking, yeah. um, which would be good for you as well, sweet, so it'll get you nice and rehydrated, won't it? Um, antibiotics and pain relief, okay. which the antibiotics would need to be injected. Right. Um, but I can show you how to do that, or you could come yeah. in to have that done. And the other option, which I think we'll probably reserve, but we can always amputate the tail if we're not getting anywhere with this wound. Okay. Um, the problem with... So geckos, it's really easy to amputate the tails under anaesthetic. You basically just pull hard and they come off at the oh. right place. Really? Um, because they drop their tails as a defence mechanism anyway. Yeah. The problem is, it is a really big drain on their body reserves to regrow it. And this is a lot of fat that she's then going to lose. So I think if we can manage it without that in the first instance, yeah. that's probably wise. Um, I wouldn't advise the purple spray. In my experience, it seems to create this kind of crustiness, right, okay. which is not helpful in you guys, is it? No. But the one advantage to having insects eat tissue is that you tend to not have rotting bits left behind. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, that's the, the one good thing. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not so great. Yeah. So, you know, open your mouth for me. Go on, you know you want to. <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, now, oh, I know small dinosaur, small angry dinosaur. Ah, uh, yes, there we go, thank you, that's what I wanted. Now, hang on two seconds. <laughs> thank you, I just wanted to look in your mouth. <laughs> Rather than make multiple return trips to the Montgomery Clinic, Tracy has volunteered to be Hazel's nursemaid. Right, so you will need two people for this, so who's most likely to be giving the injections? Probably me, why not? Do you want to hold then? Would you like to try with the Metacam? Yeah. This is going to be the only injection of Metacam she has. Is that already in there? Yeah, it's a <laughs> super small amount for her. Wow. <laughs> and then you go just into the muscle on the front leg. So it's in this, this muscle into here? Into the muscle, yeah. Just underneath, yeah? Yeah, there you go. Pull back a little bit. If you see blood, just come out and then inject. She says, ugh, mean. <laughs> That'll make her feel much better. We're just relieved that we've come here and we now know, like, what is actually wrong with her. But quite worried now, really, in the hope that what we're going to do will help her. If we could see her back in a week's time, just or sooner if you think she's going downhill at all, right, okay. and then we'll make a decision about whether we're going to anaesthetise her and have a proper look at that tail. I think if we have to anaesthetise her, we're probably going to end up amputating. I don't want her to have, to have her tail removed, but, you know, if she has to have it, she has to have it. I'm just going to hope and pray, basically, for the next week that all of, you know, the washing and the, the antibiotics and the, the pain relief for her will actually do her good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Esther, the explosives hunting Labrador, has recently been spayed. Now, owner Julie has brought in Esther's three puppies for a couple of vital procedures. This is Cookie, this is Bella, and this little boy hasn't got a name yet. He's going to wait till he goes to his new family. Hey, Julie, have you got a 
through. They've come for their microchipping and their first ejection. Sorry, I'll clear that up in a minute. <laughs> The puppies weren't planned. Um, Dexter, the male dog, obviously loves Esther, the female dog, very much. And on a walk in the field, um, should we say, gave her a little bit of love, and uh, we was, got the puppies. I think this is Cookie. I think if it's a boy, it's Cookie. You are a boy, and you have two testicles. Well done. <laughs> this is the correct number to have. We don't want one. We don't want three. So second litter. She's had them quite quickly. Um, so I think she's sort of had enough, as us women can probably uh, sympathise. There we go. Oops, you need all four feet on. Yeah, I try doing that when I get on the scales. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> Sit your bottom down. There we go. <laughs> Let's have a listen. I know you're super cute. Whether they're brought in by their breeder or whether it's their permanent owner, we always give them a complete health check before vaccinating them. So we'll do a nose to tail exam, we'll check things like their heart, check for hernias, check that everything is working properly. And then if they're all fit and well, they can have their vaccine and their microchip, which they have to have by the time they're eight weeks old. Can I have you facing anti then? First, the easy bit, a vaccination. See, that's that one done. Now, one more. Next, it's a microchip into the folds of fat behind the neck. Oh, no. I know. I know. Oh, and you're the first one. That's oh, not a good advert for the other two. Oh, dear. It's OK. It's all done. It's all done. You never have to... How could you hide it over there? Look, it's so chilled, the big one. Unfortunately, we do have to use quite a big needle for microchipping, um, but the pain really doesn't last very long. They usually get over it very quickly. <laughs> Cookie made a spectacle of himself. Will Bella do any better? Oh, that was a bit more braver than your brother, yeah. hey? It's not having a baby, but they are more self-sufficient than a baby. And I suppose they leave home earlier than a baby. Two down, one to go. It's official. First pup, Cookie, is a crybaby. Thank you. It's all right. After a thorough checkover, the puppies now have their MOT certificates and are ready for life on the road, wherever that road may take them. No, 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 not my fingers. As a vet, your job has to mean the world to you because you spend an awful lot of time doing it. I'm very sleepy and I want to go to bed and you won't leave me alone. The hours we work as a, as a vet are, are pretty crazy. Often we can be doing an operation that goes on till 9, 10, 11 at night um, or um, coming in at 4 in the morning to uh, check on a patient and things. See you later. Lucy's the worst. Oh, Lucy. You can't get Lucy out the building. She's there hours after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, feeling much better now. And we all do that anyway, but she's particularly bad. Yeah. When I'm on call, I try not to do things like run a bath because that's just asking for somebody to call you in. Um, it's definitely not a nine to five job. Oh, hi, it's Clive here from Uncle. Two weeks ago, Sucrose, the tree-jumping marsupial, arrived with an ulcer in his eye, his only eye. To combat very low tear production, his keeper, Rihanna, has been treating him continuously with eye drops. Hello, Sucrose. I've heard so much about you. It's nice to finally meet you. Like, it's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Hello. Hey, sweetie. Still looks a little uneven, doesn't it? Yeah. The surface there. His eyes still a little bit cloudy, so I just want to okay. Do you think it's better than it was two weeks ago? I think it is better. Um, I just didn't know whether the ulcer had cleared up or not, so okay. I was just hoping you guys could have a look at it. We'll see if we can, because basically it's, it's sometimes yeah. hard to know if an ulcer's there or not. Usually what we try to do is put in a little bit of this dye, and if it sticks, it means that there is an ulcer still there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're very good. It's like I've had a lot of eye drops. <laughs> Lots of eye drops. 
if there is something in there that can't be removed or if the ulcer has already burst and that eye is already infected, um, then obviously we know the welfare for sucrose would be quite diminished and therefore he probably wouldn't be able to, to make it um, without his eye. Sucrose would probably have to be euthanised for welfare reasons. I was going to see if we can just flush that slightly. There we go. Oh, he says, no, I don't like that one. Okay. So I can't see them sticking, actually. I'm just going to turn the lights off for a second. If Joe can see any remaining cloudiness on the front of the eye, it could mean it can't be saved. No, there's no fluorescein at all in that mm. area. The cloudiness can also be because of scar tissue that's left because the ulcer was there. Yeah. I think that looks good. Um, so what we're probably dealing with is a scar yeah. at the top. So we just want to um, yeah, carry on with the loop long term and keep an eye on it. Scars on the front of the eye, they can, it's, it's quite rare it will go completely clear and normal, but over time they often do improve. Okay. So I'd hope, in, hope that it would um, basically become more even and flatter and yeah. possibly clear a little bit, that's what we'd like to see. What we don't want to see is, it, is the eye looking cloudy again, further yeah. down, um, or signs of pain. So holding the eye closed and things like that. Okay, but I think it looks good at the moment. Yay! You get a live so crow. <laughs> Live to see another day. Oh, he's really cute. He is. Him and his brother are so friendly, and Aww. obviously we knew if we couldn't save the eye, we were going to lose him. So, yeah, his brother would have been on his own, and that would have been sad. But yeah, you're all good now. Good. Thank you. That's okay. While Rihanna can get back to keeping her eye on all the other animals at college, Sucrose can get back to doing what he does best, being the most popular one-eyed sugar glider in South East England. It is an incredibly happy end to um, what could have turned out to be horrible for, for all of us. So yeah, we are ecstatic and so glad that hopefully he can live to a ripe old age. He's only middle-aged, so he's got a long way to go yet, hopefully. <laughs> It's two weeks since Hazel the gecko came in with a nasty flesh condition. Hazel only has Paul for company today. What's wrong with Mr. Gecko? Hole? A hole in his toe? His tail. His tail? Oh. Oh. Not quite the same, but then. Hazel, is that her name? Good name for a gecko, I suppose, yes. Despite Hazel enduring regular treatment at home, Paul is still concerned about her tail. How are we okay. getting on? OK, there's it's still no major lumps of dead tissue coming out. Hey, Hazel. OK. Yeah, you can see that kind of dry tissue extends back, so it's just mm -hmm. forming a little plug. Yeah. I don't know what the state of the tissue underneath it is, so I don't want to pull too hard in case we do some damage. I think the slow and steady approach is yeah. the way forward. I might just try and chip some of that away with scissors. Did you want me to hold while you... Yeah, that would be fab. So... Only by cutting away more dead Ooh. skin can Vet Lindsay and student Heather see how well the tail is actually recovering. I just think all that is one big horrible lump. Let's see if we can distract you. I've certainly got used to handling being bathed three times a day. Oh, I bet. Do you know, I think it's almost ready to come, this big lump. It looks like it's giving. She's not too bothered. Oh. There we go. And that's really healthy granulation tissue there, yep. which is great. Lovely. Won't do any more than that. Okay. But it's going to just be a carrying on. Yep. Finish this course of antibiotics and then we'll stop because we've got most of the horrible stuff out now. Yeah. You can see where there was the last little bit of pus on there that's oh. just come out there. Oh, I could pick for days. <laughs> I'm one of those people who really has to avoid sunburn because otherwise I just keep. Yeah, I'm worse though. <laughs> really pleased. The 
bath in and the antibiotics have worked so well that we won't need to amputate the tail. Yeah, we're slowly getting there. Lovely. Okay. Good. I was not really wanting to do a tail amputation on no, her, so... That's good. No, I, th I think, um, I think it's, it's going really nicely now and it will just heal. It will just take a while now. Yeah. Almost got the dead tissue is gone now and it's, as you can see from how pink it is, that's all live tissue coming through and healing. It's horrible watching her suffering because it was a really nasty wound. It's only 10 days since Esther, the explosive sniffing Labrador, was under the knife. And although she's officially on maternity leave, it looks like someone's itching to get back to work. She's been laid up for quite a while because she had back to back litters. So hopefully, Esther's last visit today. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Right, Trouble. Should we have a little look at this wound? I know, I know. You're. Yes, I know. You lie down for me. You could hold her head for me, if that's OK. OK. As long as no infection has appeared around Esther's stitches, Kevin is hoping she'll be cleared for takeoff ASAP. Uh, wait, wait, now. <laughs> this is itchy, but it does not hurt. It's too... Lovely, yeah, it is all healed. OK, lovely, thank you. Right, good girl. Lovely. Well right then, gorgeous. No licking it either. Eh? Fab, so that's her signed off for a spay. Okay. No more babies for you, Trouble. Eh? Because you're a bit of a tartlet, weren't you? She was, back to back. I know. Well, now you'll be all right. You're trouble. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Esther will need to rest for another few days, after which she'll be officially match fit. Sadly, although Charlotte returned the next morning with Grump Grump, it was decided he wouldn't get any better and he was put to sleep a few hours later. Sucrose the sugar glider is back with his pals, eye intact, and enjoying the attentions of the doting students. Hazel the gecko is no longer being subjected to endless baths, and her tail is now the envy of all. Esther is back to her fighting weight, and out on the road sniffing out danger, wherever it may be lurking. <laughs>